Hi everyone and welcome to our first series of videos in the lead up to Robo Ray Australia. My name is Justin Pembroke and I am one of the event directors. These videos are designed to assist coaches in understanding the rules and processes involved in all of the competitions that will be available at Robo Ray Australia. They aim to show a visual explanation of the rules and answer a lot of the frequently asked questions. Let's get into it. The first competition we will cover is the Lego only sumo division that we have on offer. The overall goal of all RoboRave sumo competitions is to build and program an autonomous robot that can search and push an opponent out of a wrestling ring. Within the Lego division, the following rules are of importance before students start to design their robots. The first being that the Lego division is strictly just for Lego parts only. The size of the robot can be no bigger than 25 centimetres by 18 centimetres. This measurement can be taken from any orientation. There are no height restrictions, so parts that start in an elevated position can fall down after the game has started. There is no limit to sensors, motors or other Lego parts to be used. As long as it all fits within the one kilogram weight limit and meets the size requirements, it is permitted to enter. Both the Lego and open categories of sumo have a no intentional harm rule. This basically means that things like hammers and the like are not allowed. This is sumo, not battle bots. The competition board is a 100 centimetre black circle with a 5 centimetre white border. The competition boards will be elevated off the ground. Each team will compete in a series of round robin matches. The number of matches will be determined on the day. The matches will be in a best of three format. The match will be over once a team has won twice against their opponent. Three points will be awarded for a win. One point will be awarded for a draw and zero points will be appointed for a loss. Robots begin by touching the, the white outline on the elevated game board. They will take part in their competition after a three second wait and will proceed to try and find the opponent and push them out of the circle. When the match begins, the robots will hopefully find each other. We will get to a point where one of the robots will get pushed to the edge. The loser is the robot that is falling off the ring. In the event of two robots getting jammed together, the referee will do a five second countdown. At the end of that countdown, both robot operators will be asked to return their robots to the start positions. If a robot happens to flip its opponent, it has not won yet. The robot must fully be out of the circle for it to count as a win. At the start of a match, a robot must have part of its body over the opposite white line. It can start in any direction facing on the board but must be touching the white. A typical match would start like this. Both robot operators would make their way to the game board and would make sure that their referee has read, is ready to go. The referee would then count them down and they would place their robot into position on the mat. Once they are in position their hands will be away and the referee will call three, two, one, sumo. Both operators will stand back away from the board itself. Here is an example of where we would start to see a lock. Whoa. So the referee would count down five, four, three, two, one. Both operators would reach for their robot, cancel their code, and begin the process again, returning back to the white line, ready for start. We hope you found this short video useful in your preparation for Robo Rave Australia. We will have more content to come and we will have videos on the other challenges as they are.